A very good morning to you. It is 28th of August. Um, it's a Friday. We're going to be talking about all sorts of stringing materials today. So we're going to be talking about how long is a piece of string. Um, there is so many different materials you can use. Um, there is like you know, natural uh, materials like cotton cord. There are um, wires. We're going to be talking about loads of different things. Um, thank you. Someone just put up the, the super long for me to show you. Um, we have got a lot and a lot to talk about. Now, when we're talking about stringing materials, there is different um, sizes of threads. And, oh God, I just want to go through all of them with you so you know when we say, oh, I'm using super long size D that, or super long double A, or if I'm saying I'm using tiger tail, you know exactly um, what we're talking about and what we're using because there is so many different materials here. Right, let me just quickly say hello. Morning, LJ, Joe, Lorraine, Mercia, Diane, Paula, Rachel, Alicia, Shirley, and Andrea, Camille, or oh, there's so many of you love this here. Right, let's jump straight in. So the most uh, material, I suppose, the most common material I would use is tiger tail. Now tiger tail does come in different thicknesses and it comes in different colors as well and a different size of uh, reels as well. Right, let me just turn you down and I'm gonna be Right, tiger tail. I'm going to add myself just to the corner here so you can see me as well. So tiger tail is a nylon coated steel material, which is um, really, really strong. You can't break it by hand. You have to cut it with scissors or you have to cut it with, um, I think Molly didn't give me back the little tiger tail. She had the little reel. Would you be able to grab it for me, hon? Thank you. So the application of tiger tail can be so many different things as well. Um, there's many different colors available on the website. I just grabbed um, the silver and the black, which is the most usable ones. This is a large hundred reel um, tiger tail. I they three pound a reel and they go forever. Um, I got a couple, one of each at home and I had it for quite a while and they just keep going and going and going. Now a thicker size of a tiger tail there is oh and i just got caught with all my um other lovely bits of pieces here or oh, that here is a small bit so it comes in a 10 meter of readers that this is read upon four or five and then we got this thicker one now the thicker one is um, a two millimeter wire so this one is really really strong um Again, you got the steel wire inside it and they caught it with nylon. We do, do sell little necklaces already made up or you can make up your own. They do come, we got gold and black and um, they come in um, two meter sections. And let me just undo one for you. Now this one, obviously because it's so thick, you can't crimp it just with a crimp. So you have to use a special class. Let me just grab it. Where is my special class it's gone? Oh, here we go. I've got like five or six different trays here on the table. So you have to use special screw, screw class and you would crimp these onto the end of the wire and that will be our closure. But you can't use this with normal crimp beads because the crimp beads won't be big enough to go on them or the cream beads won't be big enough to loop it back because it's really nice and strong wires so i use these more for like ready-made necklaces if i just got some a, a few larger beads i just want to display on them very quick and easy make and you got um sort of a nice cable necklace in seconds right how are we doing i can see all the comments are coming in Can anybody else hear a dripping sound? Um, we're saying I um. Just the oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Simon is saying it's the comments as they're coming in. They make a sound. Um, so no, we have we haven't got a water leak here in the warehouse. Right. So moving on from Tiger Tail, um, just a couple of samples I want to show you. Um, 
tiger tail obviously we use them to string our necklaces on and let me just go to this screen and i'm going to come out a little bit just like that so tiger tail obviously we use it to string our necklaces on um you can make them shorter you can make them longer um you can multi strand them you can have a lot of different effects with it i think we went through with the facebook lives we went through quite a few of them this one is like sort of using three strands with smaller beads and grouping it together with a larger and then separating up into three um, smaller beads as well so you can do a lot with it you can also make little fringes they're just a tiger tail itself with a little crim bead at the end with some beads there is loads of different things um, what you can do with tiger tail um, for tiger tail you need crim beads and clots or wire protectors to work with them so the crim beads are these tiny little metal beads and then you crush them together with a plier and um, they sit inside the color as well is my um, finding spec down there? No, it isn't. I think Molly's when we don't know. And then you just connect it up with jump rings, and you know, this is lobster clasp on here, but you could add any other clasp on there. Right, so moving on from Tiger Oh, yeah, one, one more thing from Tiger Tail. Um, this is the popcorn jewelry. We're actually going to be doing it this tomorrow. I did it on, um, this is done on Tiger Tail. And um, just because you're using Tiger Tail, it doesn't mean that you can't extend your necklace with um, a piece of chain or something. Um, you know, you can always mix your mediums. Can you pick it up? Everybody can hear it. I don't know how to do it, Simon. Again, just a little bit um, going back on Tiger Tail. So I'm saying I have to turn the clicking off, but I'm really not sure how to do it. Um, we never, we ha I, I haven't changed anything in the changing, so I don't know. Um, I don't know, like, um, I'll, I'll have a look, I have a little play. Right, this one is, this middle part is on Tiger Tail as well. And obviously we've got pins and chains going on as well. So Tiger Tail can be a very, um, you know, basic material, but we use in so many different techniques. Amina is saying good morning from rainy and cold Leicester. It's, it's the weather is not really great here as well. The sun is coming and going, but um, I think you can sort of definitely feel it that the summer is definitely over and now we are sort of going to cool down. Right, so moving on from Tiger Tail, the next material which we use a lot is elastic. And elastic, we have, um, actually we have three different types. I'm gonna show you a couple. So the flat elastic, and Sarah also refers to it as flossy elastic. Again, um, we have got larger rolls and we've got smaller rolls. Um, the larger rolls, the larger rolls, I think they've got 25 meters on them and the smaller ones got 10. Um, they again come in many different th colors. Now, these are really great because, um, because they come in different colors, you can really match the bracelets or anything you're using it with it. And let me just grab the bracelets. I just put them, I just had them here. Oh, there we go. So a flossy elastic, I use it for bracelets when I'm using multi-row um, sort of beads. And we made a few of these already. We did the Caroline, this is another one with the Parpica design. Um, this is another one with um, Gem Duos and the uh, Tina Speeds. Um, they are really, really easy to use another one with um, this has got three nib bits and um, bracelet the check bars in there the three hole ones um, beams I think they called not bars sorry the bars only got two holes the beams got three holes on them and the little crystal so we made quite a few of these designs and they are um, really really stretchy so the flat elastic, and I think I have, in one of the question and answer sessions, we have been talking about flat and round elastic, so do check that as well. I think it was about three or four weeks back, um, we went into depth. 
very very stretchy if i'm doing multi-row bracelets or I'm, I'm using smaller beads i do love to use this you can use it with a big eye needle and it's really easy to string on now the other elastic we have is round elastic which comes in 0 0.6 0 0.8 and one millimeter and these ones are mostly oh, picked up the wrong um reel there these ones are mainly clear and they are not as stretchy as the round was the flat elastic but they are much stronger so if i want to make a bracelet out of larger beads i'm talking about 10 12 mil like really chunky beads i will use the round elastic if i'm doing something really small or i want to do a seed bead bracelet i'm going to be using flat elastic as well and just to show you the difference um, this is round elastic and this has three rows through it and which one has three rows this one has three rows to it with the flat elastic so probably that much how much i can stretch out the round elastic and with the flat one i can keep going much much longer because it's much more um stretchier um it's really you know personal preference i suppose and, and depending on what jewelry make i do use both of them at home I would say 0.8 is the one from the round what I use most. Um, the flat one, I got actually one of every single color because I like to match it to the color of the beads I'm using. Um, these are all using the white one. I think this one's gonna be purple. Right, so see this one is purple and it just sort of disappears when um, it's on your wrist. And if you're using something with clear um, crystals, then I use the clear one again disappears and i think this is the brown one yes so this one is like sort of goldy brown erase then i use the brown elastic now ha simon has given us, us a bundle for this which is you get seven of the small colored ones and two of the larger ones and they are just remind me the price simon please well, let me just have a quick peek on this okay, they should be 12 pound and they are 7.99 today so do have a look on the website because we do use these a lot and uh, they are really really great one to have now there's another type of elastic which um if you follow my page with kitty robinson designs you've seen that i've been working with this and working on this now this elastic is um it's got a core and then sort of got a thread woven all the way around it and uh, this is one this i think I put in the diary a couple of weeks down the line we're going to be doing we're going to be crocheting with elastic and the great thing about these are that um, you can join your end and beginning together and then you got a very sparkly very nice bracelet um, working um, you know just really easy to take it off and to put on but um, very different look it does look like as it was done on a kumihimo board or um, you know some sort of um, tubular stitches but in fact on the elastic i think it's a really nice um there as well lucy saying is great value that's for the elastic because we use the flat elastic so much um we just thought we put it together in a bundle but this one is coming up i'm really excited about this one so i'll just pop that to the side right moving on from elastic um Oh, there is the Caroline. That's that's why we're just looking for. Just to we did this one about three or four weeks back, I think. Um, again, this is using the flat elastic, really nice and easy to take it's off and, and the put it on. Sorry, Simon, what are you saying? So I'm having trouble hearing you. So how do I change the speaker, I darling? Don't know. It's, is the notification there next to that that might Can I sit hard? Next that microphone. Yep. But I don't know what it is. So. Turn on echo cancellation. Okay. Is that any better now? Can you hear me better? Do you let me know if you can hear me better now. If the sound is still. Um, not quite right do let me know and i try to change a couple of settings here 
what is the crochet elastic pull that is not on the website yet that's a brand new product and um, we are sorting it out and that's why I was just playing around with it the other day so um, on my personal page I did put a couple of pictures up but that is coming and uh, we're gonna release it when we do um, the crochet bracelet which I think it's in a couple of weeks time I, so I think it's a Saturday maybe um, I haven't got my diary in front of me and we planned so much in with Sarah that um, um, you know it's just sometimes it's hard to remember oh, I don't remember what day of the week is right sorry I missed the beetle on when we're talking about tiger tail um, just to sort of double back on this beetle is a um, alternative to tiger tail beetle is manufactured in America and it comes from there again um, you can have seven strand nine strand um, this is again a nylon coated steel wire um, using it with cream beads or cream tubes again exactly the same as tiger tail um, it's just a different manufacturer but the, the material is is exactly the same now with beetle on you get this really nice shiny silver as well um which you don't get in tiger tail so i do like to if i want to do a floating necklace or something like that i do like to use this one um do try it out i do let me know which one you prefer betty's saying i hear hissing i wonder if that's the fan in the Right. Maybe pro microphone. It doesn't give me that. It's only gives me. It doesn't. Oh, I taken. How about now? Are we better now? Taken the option of the phone off. So maybe it's changed and only taking the sound from the Mac now. Hopefully we sorted it. I'm so bad with the all um, technology that um, as long as it got an on and off button on it, <laughs> that, that's what counts. Right, so elastic. Oh, I didn't show you this one. Rand elastic again. Um, but using with larger beads, I definitely would use the rand elastic and use 0.8 or 1 mil. Um, if you use smaller ones then um, you can use the smaller size right let's move on to wire now wire we have um, copper wire there's so many different uh, wires are available out there what we we do sell and what's the most popular to work in jewelry terms is the copper wire which means these wires it comes in all sorts of different thicknesses these wires inside is a copper material and they coat it with all sorts of different colors now in uh, silver gold and rose gold we do stock six different sizes so you've got three mil four mil five mil six mil eight mil and one mil so depending on what you do you would need a different size of um wire now the wire do come in different colors as well so let me just grab these these are all point four wire and remember these wires we use them for the trees now point four is probably the wire and i just got a little sort of sample branch here um when we're doing the trees now point four wire is probably the wire what i would use the most because that's sort of um very easy to form with your hands still and be using in some of the flowers as well but a little bit harder than the point three it's a little bit thicker so it will hold the shape better as well and um point three wire we have used them for the flowers and can you just pass me those um lavenders from over there hand please i got simon's little assistant today bless yeah. him right so the lavenders now these ones we had 0.3 wires on there and as you can see they are a little bit softer um, I'm not really sure has the best way to show you but um, they it doesn't really matter 0.3 or 0.4 is um, good enough for the flower, flowers I guess and 0.3 sometimes you get more meters 
choose 0.3 and if you're making little loops like this um, you can get away using the 0.3 if you want to do something a bigger shape or a bigger flower you do need a 0.4 and especially like these ones if you look at the little leaves now I think these are 0.5 greens because I just wanted them a little bit more um, I suppose sturdy or a little bit more there is saying sorry kitty um, still cannot hear you very well a bit muffled we have I will have a look and Simon is just trying to sort the sand out um, for me Alon is asking what is the difference between color remain and non tarnish um, it's nothing really they, they both um, keep their color much longer than normal wire so these these all you see here they all color remain we have got our different color wires these are just normal wires so this is for when you're making like flowers and you want to cover it you're going to cover the stem of it with a flush to tape anyway and the top bits like you know it's all covered um, with beads you don't really want to use an expensive wire so you just want to use normal wire now this wire the color will change over time it does have to be I mean let me show you the difference between a a color remain color remain here and a just a normal beading wire so your normal beading wire over time will turn to more of a rhodium color and your color remain is going to stay nice and silver for longer I mean it's not going to be you know still got a plating on there and that plating cow can wear away after a time but it's gonna stay there for long much longer um, you know I had pendants out of the color remain or non tarnished wire and, um, and I'm still wearing them and they're still in really nice sort of nicking condition but I'll show you these ones in a minute so this is the difference between normal wire and color remain now color remain and non tarnish are exactly the same wire it's just coming from two different manufacturers um, we have got obviously different suppliers and sometimes um, some suppliers are not available to get um, certain colors in or certain wires in so that's when what we do is um, we try to call um, the wire from a different supplier a little bit different so the color remain coming from one supplier and a non tarnish from the other supplier although it is the same material but we do need to I guess differentiate it somehow um, how or where is it from or, or whose wire it is um, right so that's that's on the different wires now with wire you can do so many different things and me and Sarah obviously we've been exploring a lot and a lot um, of flowers and a lot of different bits of pieces and I'm just going to show you a few samples of wire so Sarah like she made this covered this um, little ever bloom camajun and this is 0.4 um, color remain or, or non tarnish wire um, I think it's really nice as well she used um, usually when I do a wrapped um, pendant I would use a thicker wire on the side but she very cleverly just used more of the thinner wire put together so there is loads of sort of different options what you want to do with it but um, these all of these pendants I have got and this is my favorite actually um, a thicker 0.8 wire on the side of it and a thinner 0.4 wire what you wrapping your ends to create that look we did quite a few of these I think we did a video way back maybe before you know the maybe March I think on these maybe we ought to redo it with a different setup because they are really I just love them I love wire wrapping and I love creating um, a shape like that because there is no rules um, no rules for these um, you can create whatever shape you like you can add whatever decoration you want to add to the top got another couple you know you can create more of a your creative flair can really come out with this one and do all sorts of different things question what is the difference between a color rain and a non tarnish yes i just um i had that one um how do you clean the wire right um 
you have to all, all this say to make sure that you don't spray perfume on the wire or if you um, you know if you wear a pendant made with the wire don't go into the shower with it try to keep it away from um, you know water as much as possible on chemicals now I, I think you know we've been talking about this with Sarah with jump rings and everything else as well that um, unfortunately like you know some of us if you take a certain type of medication um, it it releases a hormone in your body and it makes the wire tarnish quicker um, I just if I have um, any blemishes or if, if my wire starts to turn a little bit what I do I take a normal silver polishing cloth and just sort of very gently wipe over it I don't rub it because then will you will be rubbing the plating off but just very gently wipe it over and that brightens it and makes it shine again with the colored ones you don't really have to worry I guess because they're gonna stay um, that color for a long long time so that's that's it Kitty do you know if you would be getting the elastic beading needing needles. or needles you mean um, the big eye needles I think they are are they in stock at the moment Simon big eye needles I think they should be in stock because we had a delivery from them um, not long ago and um, we have um, we got another one coming actually I think next week so definitely they I think they are in stock or if not they will be in stock very soon um, Mina is saying could you do these again which one do you mean the um, the via pendant ones um, yes we will do I put that on the list as well because I, I this is this is my pet project I do did really like to do this because you can do all sorts of different design right so moving on from wire uh, well still saying a little bit and uh, moving on uh, with point three wire which is the thinnest one point or maybe point four as well but um, I generally would use 0.3 or 0.4 to knitting with it and you can create really nice textures as well um, now I made this do you excuse this this is at least 15 years old if not if, if not more um, it's just sort of like a knitted you have to add your beads on first and I just had some size 6 mixture of beads and some um, stone chips on here and they might even be cat side chips very very old but you can knit with your wire as well now another thing you can do is crochet with your wire and these are just again some mixed beads and snow stone chips um, we haven't got this clasp anymore this this is when did we have this Simon this must have been at least 15 years ago I think um, so you can crochet with it as well you can crochet little chains I love because it creates a little bit of um, if you crochet with thread, like a, a thicker thread or a thinner cord you get that really soft um, I guess texture with this one the texture what you're creating is a little bit harder so it will stay in the shape what you put in but I loved I love with thinner wire I love crocheting you can do all sorts of different things and I'm going to show you this one now do excuse this one this one is again least 15 and not so um, really really old so this was a piece I did when I did City and Guild many many years ago and it's just sort of knitted and crocheted backwards and forwards um, adding beads and loads of different bits of pieces this was inspired by sort of the seaside but then I got butterflies in here as well so I'm not really sure again over 15 years ago um, question kitty what about clear nylon cord for the invisible necklaces I will get to that because I got the nylon cord on the list as well so again you can do sort of abstract and um, all sorts of shapes with wire um, crocheting and knitting with them um, wire wrapping this one is using a 0.6 just wrapping uh, adding your beads on and wrapping then the wire around a thick cord material you can again create some really lovely um, textures and really lovely necklaces very very quickly um, 
you can create you can mix your beads or you can do any design what you like really but i really enjoyed um making these ones as well right so we're moving on from wire and um, we, I'm going to just slightly going to touch on memory wire. Now, memory wire is a tempered steel, and it comes in all sorts of different thicknesses as well. So usually you get 0.6, you get 0.8 and one millimeter. This one is 0.6, which is this beads one, and you can see this is sort of a little bit more flimsier, if the word. And this one is one mil, which is like really, really strong and. Um, they got different applications for it. So for 0.6 is the one what I would use just, or maybe you can get away with 0.8 as well, depending on how much strength you have got in your hand because you have to turn the loop on the end. So 0.6 I would use for multiple loops or even like a two, um, if I want to make a bangle and use some of the lovely, there's another one here. Um, bracelet bars to hold the two wires together um, very lovely and very easy project to do and just sort of use a mixed beads um, with them um, so 0.6 or would could go up to 0.8 if I haven't got 0.6 but because you have to turn the loop at the end um, 0.6 is easier to turn with 0.8 is a little bit more difficult but still turnable but with the one, one mil you can't turn it with um, your ran nose plies because it's just too strong so for the one mil we would just use it for um i didn't actually bring one in i meant to bring one in um you know our diamond tubing um i would use it on that one and then i glue the ends on on either side and it would be you know really nice and secure and really strong as well so that was memory wire. memory wire again comes in bracelet size come in a ring size and come in a necklace size as well so you could get um, do all sorts of different lungs. Kimberly is asking a question could you get colored memory wire? Can memory wire can come in silver, gold or rhodium but I haven't seen sort of pink or anything that sort of colors before. Um, Lauren is asking did you plan the necklace out or random? I struggle with random that I do struggle with random as well. So uh, when I when I have a bead soup, and when we're talking about bead soup, um, I haven't got anything here. It's just sort of a mixture of beads. Um, I struggle to pick them up because I keep picking up either the same ones or keep picking them up in the same order. So if I'm working with a bead soup, often what I do, I really mix it up, and they just sort of pull it out, pull it out on it or to a single strands so of one bead after one bead behind and just by chance and I keep um I will keep to that order um when I'm picking them up otherwise I will pick up the same things. Right so random thing I just want to show you this one. This is another over 15 years old sample. Um this is I found this one as well in my um, treasure box. We moved for over four years ago and I packed up some of my jewelry into this box which then we moved, we ended up in the guest room and it was in the chest of Joe's and the other day I was um, clearing it out and I found this big box of jewelry and this, this was one of them in there and um, I think we're going to do little earrings with this little fuchsias but um, this is another mixed media necklace. Now this one is done on thread and the difference between the wire one which is really stiff and will keep the shape, the thread one is much more fluid and can be sort of turned and um, around. They both got the uses but it's depending on what medium you're more comfortable, comfortable to use you can create very similar looks. I mean this one I think I call this summer garden, but again, do excuse it, it's about 15 years old, but um, I guess like, you know, it, it does shows that, that none of these beads I think we sell anymore, or we even have anymore, I don't even know where they were from, but um, it's just sort of creating a mixture, and um, I think some beaded um, flowers here, seed beaded flowers, so these flowers are done on thread and needle, and I'm going to do the fuchsias for a earrings long. I love this one as well. So I might have to have a little play and do a brooch or a pendant just like this one because although it's only 
um, thread and seed beads I think it looks really good and what's the difference between you know if I did this on wire which we can do it would be much stiffer and would stay the same um, shape like you know there is not that much movement in your wire flowers but if you make flowers with thread and needle there's there is this lovely movement in it um, what I love as well so um, that's that one. So now we're touch, touching on thread. So let's go on to thread. Now there is a couple of threads what we use in beading quite a lot. And I do um, mention this, the Supilon D and AA. Now with um, the D is a slightly thicker material and the AA is a slightly thinner one. Now I think Molly added these um, mixes to our page for you and there's a slight discount on them now we use this all the time I do have all 36 colors at home and this is what I love about um, Supilon that it comes in 36 colors so if I use it with green beads I can use a green thread although this because it's being so old this sample I think this must, must have been Nymo in here or some other threads because there is so many different threads that are available um, I used Nymo before, um, oh, what was the other one called, I can't remember, I, I've tried G thread and all sorts of different ones, but I keep sticking with Supilon because of the colour range it comes in, so if I'm using pink beads, um, like this one, I can use my pink thread and it just sort of disappears on there, if I'm using blue beads, I can use a blue colour, etc etc um, you can always match it and make it really professional now a lot of people do um, prefer fire line as well which we do so now fire line is a little bit um, stiffer material and a little bit more like a, um, I would say it's between a fishing line and a thread um, it's a really nice material to work with as well. Fire Lunk is probably 10 times more expensive than the Supilon and it only comes in about three different colors. So you can get clear, smoky or black um, or white. Clear, smoky or white. Um, yeah, do try out. Do you see which one is um, your favorite and which one you like to work with because I do use, um, on a whole, I do use all of the different ones but I use them for different... Um, different um, applications. The question is thread mix 3 back in stock next got the other two. I am um, I think all the Supilon is in stock I think if make which one is mix 3? Simon which one is mix 3 do you know? I think that's mm -hmm. 1, 2 and 3 they should be all in stock. They're not. Sienna's not in stock. Or the Sienna is not in stock or oh, mix three, this must be mix three, mix three yes. Um, Blake bought it up and bought um, one less than it. So CNA is not in stock and that hasn't been in stock with the supplier for quite some time. But what we can actually do, because um, you would get 12 colors in a mix, that um, perhaps we could put 11 colors in the mix and double up on the purple, which you would use the most. And that's sort of that lavender purple is the one I use the most. Um, we could do that, Simon, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, Simon's going to sort the ad for you. Um, LJ is saying, I have seen fire line in dark green as well. Um, quite possibly so. We only um, stock three sizes and they are much more expensive than Supalon. Um, I do use all of them. I did. I made a, um, when I was making a necklace for my cousin um, in white, I did use fire line and it was sort of a stitchy one and I really, um, you know, all of all of them are good. Which one are you? I mean, a question. Can you use suit cord in sliding knot? Now, so I'll, I'll get to the cord in a minute. So, threads. Um, different properties of thread. Now, again, excuse this one because this is a million years old. Um, it's just a straight sort of uh, seed beads and larger beads between thread. There is no clasp on it because I made it long enough to fit over my head and I usually tie a little knot at the front and that's how I wear it. Um, million years old again. Um, now this one again when we do simple stringing we do use um, tiger tail a lot but doing it with thread or a silk cord or something 
uh, more of a thread-like material, what do you get? You get this really nice fluidity in your necklace, so really nice and comfortable, comfortable to wear it, even though just you're doing one strand. Um, or again, the coralling as well. You want that movement within the the fringes. You want to be able to, you know. Um, you wouldn't you could you can do this one with monofilament because I had seen it done but if you do it with monofilament your fringes are going to be more harder and they're going to be more sticking out if you're doing it with thread it's going to be more fluid so um, loads of different use like you know you could um, with thread you could use loads of different um, stitches we, we, do, we do a lot with thread actually basically um, use it for almost you know, and anything with um, any any of the stitches. Now, moving from thread to monofilament, this one is done with monofilament. Now, monofilament, and where is my one escape to? I've got so many different, so many, can you see it on here? Just here. Mm -hmm. Now, monofilament, there is a couple of different sizes we stop. We've got 0.5 and 0.25, and both, um, if we do use both of them, um, for different projects. Now, if I have to do a weave where I have to come backwards and forwards, I would use 0.25. If I'm doing a weave like this one, where I only have to go through the beads perhaps one, or I have to cross over in one bead, then I would use the thicker one. Now, the, the 0.5, here you sort of start on one end and go all the way down to the other end and not your, not your end off and your bracelet is done. Here, you would go all the way down and then you come back on yourself. So um, you're attaching your ends to the clasp a couple of times and the 0.25. You need to go through the beads again, so you need to use the, the thinner one. Now you could use these with big eye needles as well. If I use big eye needle, I only just sort of catch the end of it. Because with the big eye needle, you can get a little bit of a sharper um, and they're through the eye. So I always just sort of catch the end of it and that's how I use it. This is really just like a fishing line sort of material. Um, really strong and um, it usually only comes in clear. Um, we certainly only stock this sort of clear finish. Um, very nice to use it as well. But this one is not as fluid than have I got something similar with thread. The only one with this, uh, this I got uh, with thread here. This one is more fluid. So if you use thread, it's gonna be your necklace or bracelet, anything you make, so you're gonna be more fluid and more shapeable. With the monofilament, it's gonna be more um, stiffer, I guess. That's the word I'm looking for. So again, monofilament, um, I do use it quite a lot for different bits of pieces. I have made a bracelet and I think that is actually home um, with this pattern using thread and I used um, hematite beads and um, it, was, it was more fluid. Right, so that's monofilament. Now, other types of threads we have got, I love these. I really, really love working with this one. I did a few different projects with them. These are the metallic thread. Now, this is called a metallic thread, but it's actually a more of a synthetic material. And I actually haven't bought, I've bought so many trays of things up and I haven't bought a reel up um, just separately. Again, you get about 30 meters on a reel of these ones and this is available in a little bundle as well Simon isn't it so I'm just gonna give you the link now I love using these ones because um, you leave the thread sort of showing this metallic thread showing with your designs and it just gives just extra depth and dimension to your necklaces Doris is asking how difficult is to tie off her monofilament please um, I would tie it off um, you know, it's very similar to the elastic, so I would tie off the same way, but I would use a little nail varnish or a bit of glue on the top of it to secure it. 
So to go on these, uh, going back to these threads, I really love using them because they give that sort of metallic -y look in your jewelry very easily. You know, these again, this piece of this piece of jewelry was very easy to make. Um, the three strands sort of knotting them together and then separating them apart and just adding the crystals on it so if you've got any leftover bits you could use different colors on there but you can create a really nice looking jewelry it's very simple and less materials but because you have it on this really nice thread metallic looking thread it just makes it look like really expensive and really more than what you have i do love you using this as well and i have got a crushing project coming with them so that's the metallic thread now from metallic thread then we're going to go into um a little bit thicker materials and cords and bits of pieces so red tail we have used this quite a lot um, Sarah used it with her macrame projects. Um, we had quite a few now, and I think we got another one coming up very soon. We're just going to be featuring and using these ones. Now we have got a mixture of this one, which is usually um, has 15 colors, but in the mix, what we have at the moment, we only got 14 colors on because um, I think we've run out of black or one of the colors. And let me just these. Now red tail is available in many different um, sizes and many different finishes and many different colors as well. Um, just to sort of show you a comparison that this is the size um, what we got in a bundle so this is the one millimeter in size really nice and easy to work with. We also do two millimeter which is slightly thicker and if I put them next to each other you can see it's not quite twice the size but um, almost twice the size um, I love this rainbow one what we have um, you can either do it like just cut it wherever you cut it and create a um, very sort of rainbow look or if you cut them exactly at the same place which I cut it right right at the purple then you can create the rainbow color going all the way around um, I love red tail because it's a very it's a silky material and it's really nice and easy to work with it can be slippery as well so when you're doing your knots um, I always just sort of tug it a little bit um, they're saying USB project thirsty cord about to use it today oh, about to use it today oh bless I think that it has got the uh, a rat tail in there with some lovely beads. So yeah, so the, these are again your bread and butters because you can use them with loads of different things. You can use them with loads of uh, nothings and you can use it for loads of uh, um, different projects and be coming back and back and back to these. Now for, for the rat tail, as you can see, it's got this really nice sort of shiny finish on them. And if I move on to the Vax Cotton Cord, i just grab these three here. Now Vax Cotton Cord, again, very similar in size, but um, this, um, well, it's made of cotton, <laughs> hence the name Vax Cotton Cord, and they Vax it. This is not as shiny, so you get a more of a, a muted jewelry with this one. Um, I love using Vax Cotton Cord as well because it looks, um, looks very natural to me and if you're doing male jewelry this one is we got like two millimeter mixes and this one is from one of them um you can with, with the red tail because it's it's really nice and shiny i would use it for more sort of female but i, I don't really want to sort of discriminate anybody because you can use it for anything but i use the shiny ones more sort of for me but female jewelry and the wax cotton cord is perfect for male jewelry because it just just looks just as good you can get in so many different colors but it hasn't got that really um it's more like a matte finish on them so i love using them both again very similar sizes there is oops there is a two millimeter um vex cotton cord here as well in a neutral color you, you, you use it for knotting use it for macrame use it for just on its own you can use it for a lot of different things right moving on just drop this a couple of samples um, this one is actually on wax cotton cord I made this double wrap bracelet um, quite some time ago 
could be this is this is not 15 years old but um, I reckon this is at least six or seven I mean this double wrap uh, bracelet with some bracelet bars and um, this lovely crystal pendant now this is on um, wax cotton cord as well um, again you could use the rat tail for this as well it doesn't really matter if this instant it was just about the size of the cord rather than the, um, the material itself um, this one again it's wax cotton cord just using sort of beads larger hole beads and some um, bracelet bars uh, wax cotton cord again just using beads on the outside um, this one is exactly the same technique as um, Sarah showed it to you with all your square knots starting off with one line in the middle two on the side and when you include the bead you just sort of add beads to the outside of the cord as well oh this one I forgot about this one monofilament just jumping back to monofilament I use monofilament quite a lot when I do my kumihimo um, with beads and because it just gives you that a little bit stiffer um, finish but not too much that um, it, it becomes a bangle so it's, it still moves really nicely but just a tiny bit stiffer so I that's on those cords. Now other cords are available and for example the plaited cord um, which Sarah used was it last week? One of the days. Don't ask me which day it was because I probably wouldn't be able to tell you. Now you can do loads of different things with it. I did this um, this is not 15 years old but might be close to 10 um, just sort of using them in the clasp and just adding and netting the braces. I think perhaps not to do with skulls, but um, we could we could do this bracelet because I really love this one. It's a really lovely technique. Um, we could do this sometime. I think it would look really lovely. I think we still got this some of this clasp in stock, haven't we? Simon says maybe. So I think that's a yes. So that's, uh, um, and Sarah did uh, quite a few things with it. There are other cords as well. I think this one is called Multi Color Wax Cord. Again, this is like the wax cotton cord. It's, I'll just show you this one. This one is quite a thick one. So all of these cords will have a middle to them. And then a material sort of plaited or whatever way they put it on the outside there is different um, patterns with different things on the outside of it this one is 3.5 millimeters so this one is really great just to have it on its own or you know with your large hole beads or anything like that oops and i almost lost the whole roll there now this again comes in many different sizes um cords again you just have to i guess um figure out which one you like the best and which one you like the best to use. I do love these ones because they're really nice and colorful and they come in many different sizes as well. These ones are really good for your pla uh, um, macrame as well as using them on it, on its own with other um, beads, larger hole beads or even like, you know, small beads. You can do a lot of things with them. So there's many different cords available out there. Um, there is leather cord as well. Move on to leather cord. Um, these are just sort of length of leather and um, it's sort of glued somewhere, it will be, if I find it. That's how they manufacture it. So you can have them in like 50 meter rolls or in some places even longer. I can't find it on this one. But this is like a natural leather material. I think it's here. You can't really see the join, but um, 
I, I, I can see it. You can use it for knotting, you use it for loads of different projects. Very nice material to work with, very natural as well. This comes in all sorts of different colours. You can, you know, really match your beads or match your jewellery, really um, glitz it up. I really do love to work. And, and there is different sizes as well. This one is one mil, which is properly that's the one what we use the most. Um, other cords, oh, I need to show you this one there. Sarah's got a project coming up with these ones, these guys. Um, these are little rubber tubes. Now, some of them are hollow and some of them um, has not got, this, I think we've got eight or nine different colors. Um, some of them are solid all the way through. So they are, you can use them on day on or you can use them, you can bead around them. And um, I'm not going to say anything anymore because she's got a really great project coming up with them. Um, just to use them as a um, sort of a core of uh, uh, something stitched around. Oh, you didn't, I didn't tell you. She's been working with that. We're just waiting for some um, lovely premium bike on beads to come in. Um, interesting question. That would be, what would be the best with leather cords to use for a white bracelet? What, what sort of white bracelet do you mean? Am I missing something or did I just read it wrong? So with, with leather cord or any of the leather cords, um, I like to use crimp cords or I like, I like to use the glue in class because then sort of the ends disappears. Um, crimp cords are fine, but um, I just find with any, any cord, I'm just going to pick up this one. I know this one is not leather cord, but with any cord, I just find a glue in class which just gives you a really nice and professional finish. Um, right, so, oh, I didn't show you the thicker red, there is thicker red as well on roll, again, really nice and shiny, um, material, good for your macrame. Now, flatter cords, or the hemp cord first, let me just show you the hemp cord. Hemp cord, same as your wax cotton cord or your, um, any of the other cords. But um, it's a very, it's made of hemp, so it's a very nice and natural material. Now we have them on little cards, come in four different colors, and um, you can sort of either mix or match them. I think there is about 20 meters of each one of those colors on there, so there is a lot of what you can be working with. It makes, um, you know a very natural bracelet will give you will give you a very natural look um, not really shiny at all more of a even more of a matte finish than your wax cotton cord because with the wax cotton cord and where did I just put it let me just grab one with the wax cotton cord although um, it's still a natural material but because they wax it it has got a more of a soft sheen to it and and your hemp cord are quite uh, matte as well so that's your hemp cord. I love using the hemp cord for all sorts of different um, projects as well. Right, so moving on from um, your cords, we do have the these babies. They are really, I love these ones and I did quite a few, I think I did it two, two different um, Facebook lives with using this. It's like a shoelace type cord and where is my bag? With, oh, right in front of me. Um, they, this comes again in five different colors. I just bought the navy blue and um, you got the turquoise one here. It's like a shoelace kind of material. This is wax cotton cord as well, but this is flat. So you can use it as a ribbon. Now you could make this jewelry with an ordinary ribbon as well, but um, you would lose some of the dimension because this one has got sort of like a millimeter thickness in it. So when you make your jewelry up with it or front piece or anything you want to do, you have this really nice defi definition. So if you just use a normal satin ribbon or anything but um, you can buy in any of your um, material shops, the ribbon will be too thin and you lose the definition um, going around the beads. So this is a really it's eight millimeter in width. It's a really nice um, material to work with. Very natural wax cotton cord. So this material is same as your wax cotton cord. Um, I was showing you the purple a minute ago. It's escaped on me, the purple one. 
same material. So that's on those, and I think we almost covered everything in the cords, have we Simon? Mm -hmm. He's nodding his head. I think that's pretty much it for cords. But was there anything else but, um, oh, the mesh. And I'm just going to show you, um, we did quite a few projects with the mesh. You can fill them with beads. You can add, um, actually I've got um, my little bag here. You can fill them with crystals. Now this material is really great because um, it's a hollow tube and um, you can fill, fill it with anything you have, um, which is, I guess, smaller than the tube itself so in this case it's eight millimeter or smaller and um, we got larger ones as well but you can create them and you can knot them and do all sorts of different looks I love doing this one um, this is more of a the loop mesh I loved making this one just seed beads inside it but it looks great but you could add um, crystals and all sorts of different bits of pieces let me just get you another one with a bigger one with crystal. Um, these are little sort of resin diamonds, I guess, and they just make really, really sparkly jewelry. So that's the mesh. I, I think that's that's really about it. That um, we could look at chain and different sort of type of chain, but I think that's for another video because I've been rabbiting on for an hour here for you already, and um, I don't um, sort of want to bo bore you a lot. But if you got any questions, oh, one more cord. So when um, we, I forgot about these ones, they were hiding behind my wire. These are like um, a faux sewed um, cord. Now these are really great because I would use them exactly the same I was used as suede cord. It has got the same feel about them. There is, um, they are three millimeter in size. There is five meter on a spool and they're two pound a spool. And I think we got a little bundle of this, haven't we, Simon? So they should be 10 pound and how much are they? 6.99 so again they are really great um, to use it in longer necklaces feels exactly the same as your leather suede but these ones is faux so um, you know I, I think um, these day in life um, we use so much fake fur and fake um, stuff to help the animals I guess bless them so I, I, I personally prefer this to normal suede and um, it's a really nice material to work in but it works exactly the same as suede it acts exactly the same as suede and it just we got them in five different colors and I think that's it I think I have covered pretty much everything which is on my desk here just looking but um, oh show you this little sample this little guy this is vax concord as well it's quite a small bracelet just sort of weaving in and out so you can create different looks you don't just have to think about when using these cords you don't don't just have to because often people think about either a kumihimo they use cords for or a um where is my shambhalan to sample from Oh, I'm losing everything here today. Oh, the little bracelet, little knotted bracelet. I've got a few of them. I just tried to put them in piles, but it's gone. Gone away, never mind. So, you know, you, you can create very different looks with your um, cords as well. And it's just you only need a few bits of material with some larger whole beads on there, and that's it. So, um, has anybody got any question or, or you want me to show anything else again? Um, do let me know. Let me just go back. Um, Lorna Skane, thank you for Q&A. Very important. We learned a lot today. Um, Debbie's asking, what ending would you put on the fake suit? Um, now, I would use exactly the same as you would um, for a normal one. We've got little crimps and... Um, I haven't got any up here. I should have bought some of those up as well. They're called cord crimps, and I get Simon to give you a little link. 
um, and they just fold over on the end of them or alternatively or one of them this one was sticking out um, alternately you can use your glue small glue ends in as well but because they're a little bit flattish in shape so if I just show you like the leather which is more in a round in shape this one is more flatter so the um, cord crimps are perfect for them because they are a little bit flat as well and um, so to put it behind it and you would fold each side on the top of it um, as well very easy make so I'm just going to give you a link was there anything else you wanted to know or was there anything else you want me to cover um, there is so much to sort of think about and there's so many different materials and do so many different things with it but um, you know I think what is a mindful for a lot of body be a lot of people because you use specific materials for specific projects and um, if you do the same project with a different material like if you would it do with a thread or a monofilament um, the look might be very similar but the feel of it is going to be very different and if you use it the wrong sort of material for your project then it might sort of puts you off to make even more um, so I hope today has helped and um, I cleared up some of the things or some of the um, uh, questions or myths you had um, do let me know if you've got any more questions I will pop back and have a look um, a late run um, tomorrow I'll be doing popcorn jewelry so I did show you have showed you the lovely popcorn necklace here itself now I have got some new um, well the crystals just came in so I got some new crystal bundles I put together which um, we're gonna use a little bit smaller ones so I think um, same look but it's gonna be a little bit more delicate um, I can't wait to show you tomorrow do you have a lovely day um, I'm just saying my question was meant to say rapid bracelet and which with leather oh so rapid bracelet it doesn't really matter any sort of cording material I'm I'm sure <laughs> I put the bracelet under the camera we're not even on the right camera so that's just me then so for a rapid bracelet it doesn't really matter this one is adding the beads and I don't think I bought one in where you sew the beads on so where, when you add the beads on you need large enough beads to sort of go onto your cord if you wrap it around um, like Sarah showed it to you I think it was about a few a few days ago it was definitely not last week the week before um, you need to match your thread to the cord you use but you could use any cord you could use rectal you could use Vexcon cord you could use a thicker one or a thinner one I have got some um, I got quite a few of them at home because I, I, I did love making them but uh, you could use um, any material what you fancy really so that's it for me today do enjoy your day I'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. I Sarah's gonna be with you on Sunday um, tomorrow we're doing the popcorn jewelry and Sunday she's doing some lovely little brooches so do chin do tune in for that as well um, keep on beating everybody stay safe and i'll see you tomorrow bye